All right, I've got another programming puzzle here on screen uh, that we can look at and solve together. If you're not familiar with some of the, the previous videos I've done like this, what's special about this or different is that rather than using a programming language to create a program that solves the, the problem, we're just going to paste in the input data from the puzzle into our text editor, which is Vim, and we're going to make strategic modifications uh, to the input data in order to come up with the answer. Vim has tons of really amazing features. It's just a text editor, but you really you can push it to do almost anything you want. And um, so it's kind of just a fun exercise, uh, just kind of a way to constrain yourself to solve a problem. I've learned a lot about Vim myself by doing this. You can see that I've already got the input data in Vim here, but let me explain what, what it is we're actually trying to solve. This comes from last year's Advent of Code series, and this is day 10. Basically what this is, is we're given a big list of fake CPU instructions. So there's two different instructions. We have add x with some value, and we have a no op. And each of these instructions takes a certain amount of time or cycles to complete. This add x one takes two cycles. This no op takes one cycle. Our ultimate goal is really, uh, they're gonna ask us if we're on cycle number 20 or cycle number 60, they wanna know what the value is at that clock cycle. And they also mentioned that at the beginning of the program, like the, the value is one. I guess the thing that makes this tricky is you might think that, uh, oh, they want the signal strength at clock cycle 20. Uh, well, I'll just go down 20 lines and sum up everything until line 20. Well, you can't quite do that because of how long it takes for the addX instruction to complete. Even though you're right here in the program, three hasn't been applied yet. And even right here, three has not been applied yet. It's if there was another instruction after that, then the value would actually get incremented to three. And ultimately what we're trying to do is find at any given cycle, they wanna know the signal strength at that moment in time. And the signal strength is just the clock cycle times the register value. And the register value is what we're tallying up as we go. Ultimately, we got to find like, what is the signal strength at all these cycles and then sum all those up. And that's the answer we're looking for. If you still don't understand the problem after my crappy summary of it, you can go to this URL that I'll put in the description and you can read the problem um, if you're interested. Let's start looking at how we can solve this in Vim. What I want to be able to do is go down, you know, 20 lines or so, whatever they're asking for, and just sum up all the numbers that are between that. But I can't do that right now because of the cycle times. They're different per instruction. So really one trick I could do is just say, anytime I see an add X, I want to proceed that with a no op. Uh, like that should make the line numbers match up with the cycle times and the values um, should be in the right place. So first up, I'm gonna start off by doing substitute with percent sign for a range of the whole buffer. S, I want to find any time there's an add X followed by anything. I want to replace that with no op slash R for a new line and ampersand, which references whatever I matched on and puts it in there. This will effectively put a no op on the line before any add X command. So did a hundred substitutions there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just kind of some housekeeping or preparation for a future step, which is to be able to add up these numbers here, which we're going to want to do eventually. I want every positive number to have a plus sign in front of it, which will just help out uh, with our method for adding them up later, which you'll see. So again, substitute command this time with uh, anytime I see a space followed by a digit, I want to put a plus sign. So plus sign. And I'm going to do ampersand again to reference it. But you can see this isn't quite what we want because the plus sign is before the space. I want it. I want the plus sign right next to the digit. One way I can change that is using slash zs. And now the plus sign moves between the space and the digit. zs is kind of a way to tell the substitute where you want your replacement to begin from. 65 substitutions. And now all my numbers are in kind of a standard format. Now the question is, how do we actually add up these numbers? Uh, so like we'll be given a line number or a cycle time, and we want to be able to go to that position in the buffer and sum up any numbers that are above that. Let's play around with the substitute command to do that. I'm going to use a more specific range. I'll do one through, we'll say line eight. Like we need to sum up the values, you know, above line eight. If I want to exclude line eight itself, I can do a minus sign 
and then um, S for substitute. And what do we want to match? Well, we know we want a digit, but not just one digit. We want one or more digits. And then not just the digits, uh, we want the plus and the minus sign as well to be included. So we can put those in a in some brackets to say either or. And now this is the match we want, so that looks good. How do we want to replace this? Normally, you know, you'd replace it in the buffer there, but my thinking is that we want to select these numbers and it'd be really cool if we could find a way to just stick them into some register so that we can access them when we go to add them up using the expression register. There is something I need to do uh, before hand, which is set ink command to something empty. And I'm not going to take the time to explain this in the video. I just don't want to use up the time for that, but maybe I'll put something in the description. So anyways, back to the search command that we had, I'm matching all these numbers and I want to actually enter an expression to apply to each of these matches rather than replace something in the buffer. To do an expression on each match, I can do slash equals. In here, there's a function I want to call called set reg, which will set a register with a value. And so the first uh, thing that it takes is a uh, register. So we'll use the name register A. And then the second thing it takes is the value and you want to put it in. So, so I want to reference the match, whatever I'm matching. So I have to do sub match zero rather than ampersand like we saw before because I'm in an expression right here and you can't do the ampersand there. And then this will almost work, but if you think about it, this will for every match, it will put that match into the, the named register A, but it's going to replace it every time. What I want is for, for all the values to just stack up in there. So we want to be able to append to the register every time without uh, removing whatever was there before. So luckily we, we can do that if we make it a capital A. Every named register has a capital version and a lowercase version. If it's capital, it will just append um, instead of replace. And then the last thing I want to do is add a flag for substitute n. It'll only make it report the, the number of matches and it won't it won't actually change anything in the buffer. We can run that and you can see down there it did three matches. Let's take a look at what's in there. So I'm going to drop down to the bottom of the file with capital G. I'm going to do O for insert mode. And I'm going to enter the expression register that I was talking about earlier, which is how we're going to sum everything up. So control R equals gets me into the expression register. From here, I'm going to do some parentheses to help out with order of operations. I can grab whatever value is in my named register A by doing control R followed by A. And whoa, this, this is good, but it's also bad because you can see it's way too much. We only expected like three matches. It's just got so much stuff in there. And that's because we didn't clear the named register A before we appended to it. So one thing you got to be careful about when you're doing the appending to a register is you got to clear it beforehand or it'll have some junk from last time you used it. One way to do that is just let at a equals empty. Let's try that again. So let me undo my changes. I think this is where we're at. So I'm just going to clear it one more time. Let's go up in our history. So it should be three matches, bottom of the file, go into the expression register, put in our value from A, and that looks a lot better. And so if you remember from the problem, the value started at one, not zero. So I need to actually add one here. The number we're interested in is whatever the sum of these values are multiplied by the cycle number. So I think that was eight. And then from here, we can just hit enter. Now we actually know pretty much everything. We know how to do everything we need to in order to solve the problem. The last thing I want to try and do is streamline this a little bit uh, because they're going to ask us for like six different uh, positions or cycle times that we need to figure out and then sum those up at the end. And so the next thing and kind of the last thing to do is apply this to a macro. If I bring up the problem, they want us to find the signal strength during these six um, cycles. 20 is the first one and 220 is the last one. There's 40 cycles in between each of these. And so I need to write a macro that essentially does that substitute command that we just uh, were looking at that substitutes all the matches into the named register A. I need to do that for each of these values. We'll go back over into Vim here so I can start writing that. I'm going to undo our changes there. So I think this is where we want to be. The first thing I want to do before I even start the macro is um, I need a new named register that I'm going to use kind of as like a variable. So I'm going to say let at B equals 
20 because that's the first cycle position we're interested in. Now I'll begin recording. I'll do QQ. I usually just record my macros into the Q register. QQ, and then the very first thing we want to do is uh, let at A equals empty because this is what we're going to be appending to. And then we will start doing the substitute command from earlier. So our range is now one through. We want whatever's in B here. So I can do control R uh, B and then the minus sign to exclude that line and then S and I wanted either a minus or a plus followed by a digit and not just one digit. It could be one or more digits. What did I want to replace that with? Well, I wanted to do an expression. So set reg, we want to put the match. We want to append it to the A register. Sub match is how we get it. And then slash N. And now I will make sure I jump to the bottom of the file. Go into insert mode on a new line. Now I will do the expression register. So control R equals. Um, and then we want what is ever in A. So a and we can't forget the plus one and now i want to multiply all this by whatever is in b so again control r followed by b gets me that i'll hit enter i can escape and before i quit recording i want to increment b by 40 plus 40. And i'm good to quit recording and so now the moment of truth we'll see if this actually works so we'll do this five more times because there was six total positions five at q so that's a good sign it spit out five more numbers now i no longer care about all the instructions so i want to just delete everything in this file except for the last six lines range one to dollar sign for end of the file minus six to go six lines up from that and just d now we just need to sum all these up to get the final answer. And I have something crazy. It's basically like joining all these onto one line with a plus sign in between. And I really don't know why it works. Well, I know why most of it works, but I don't know why it excludes the very last match. See, this is what it looks like. You can toggle back and forth there. It's joining those numbers and putting a plus between them, except it doesn't do this very last one. I'm really not sure why <laughs> that works because the dollar sign, I thought that's just end of line, but this is like acting like it's the end of the file. So I don't know, kind of confused about that, but it works. And then from here I can do C dollar sign. Now everything's in my unnamed register. So I can go back to the expression register, control R double quote to call up the unnamed register. And hopefully this is the right answer, 137.40. Pull out this. Uh, your puzzle answer, 137.40. We did it. And now I can go to bed.